After a decade of dedication, Iran has made leaps and bounds in a relatively new but undoubtedly revolutionary science, nanotechnology. As a front-runner in the field, Iran is now holding its sixth nano exhibition, in which over 150 companies and institutes are participating. In this edition of Iran Today, we will take a closer look at Iran's activities in the way of nanotechnology and the nano products presented in the exhibition. High technologies are part of many countries' strategic plans in the world. In recent decades, scientists have branched out from using high technology to merely explore outer space. Their new obsession is to do with the atomic world, a tiny universe as small as one billionth of a millimeter. Nanoscience is the study of a material in nanoscale and how to manipulate that material to reproduce it with superior features. Nanotechnology promises to revolutionize a wide array of scientific fields from physics to medicine to IT. This year is the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the Iran Nanotechnology Initiative Council. After a decade of launching its ambitious project, Iran is one of the world's leading nations in producing nanoscience and technology. In 2011, Iran became the world's number one in scientific growth. Then, in 2012, it became number one in the Middle East in science generation and the 17th in the world, publishing over 34,000 articles in scientific journals. Iran hopes to become the region's top country in economy, science and technology via its ambitious 20-year vision plan, which ideally should be realized by 2025. The plan requires the government to invest in developing high technologies in the country. Along those lines, the government has been investing heavily in nanotechnology as one of the key technologies of the 21st century. In 2003, Iran's Nanotechnology Initiative Council was established to support the development of the science in the country. Said Sarkar, the secretary of the council, explains. When we found that nanotechnology as an emerging technology uh, is a top priority for advanced countries, we decided to uh, act in this te technology and be very active. Uh, so. Iran Nanotechnology Initiative Council was established for policy making and uh, uh, support our nanotechnology development all over the country. And from uh, human resources development to marketing and wealth creation. In 2005, the council released details of its plan to develop nanotechnology in the country. This plan is called the Future Strategy. According to the plan, in a 10-year period, Iran will be a developed country in nanotechnology with advanced local infrastructures and expert human resources, effective and constructive collaboration between domestic and foreign science teams, the ability to give added value to products, and the ability to compete on a global level in this field. We have a 10-year strategic plan, which is divided into three phases. 
and uh, it uh, will finish by the end of 2015. And uh, in our mission in this strategic plan was set to, uh, I mean, uh, enhancing people's quality of life and wealth generation to have a sustainable economy based on nanotechnology. In order to accelerate the development of the technology, Iran has invested in training and hiring expert human resources. Currently, more than 15,000 researchers are working on nanotechnology in over 30 Iranian universities and 57 laboratories. These scholars are supported by the Iran Nanotechnology Initiative Council. At the beginning of our project, we were financially supported by Iran Nanotechnology Initiative Council. Because the researchers in universities were not much familiar with the atmosphere and demands of industries, the council paved the way for them to get acquainted with industries by holding various classes and sending researchers to national and international nano exhibitions. The council also organized some communication opportunities between us and other academic active in nanoscience. According to statistics, in 2012, Iran was the region's number one nation in the production of nanoscience technology. In 2003, Iranian scientists published 30 articles on nanotechnology, which won their country 50th place globally. Now, after 10 years, the country is in 8th place, producing 3,627 articles and claiming a 4% share of the world's nanoscience. When we started nanotechnology in our country, I mean uh, year 2000, Iran was ranked 59 in the world by publishing 8 papers throughout the whole year. But fortunately last year, the number of our publication went beyond uh, 3,600, which means 10 publications per year. So if we consider from eight publications per year to 10 publications per day, you see it's an explosive, actually, uh, improvement in, the, uh, in science generation in the field of nanotechnology. Iranian experts and researchers have worked hard to put their theories and ideas to the test and produce nano products as well as nano equipment. In 2012, Iran produced over 38 kinds of nanotechnology equipment and also obtained patents for 22 products from the US Patent and Trademark Office, ranking 29th in the world. <laughs> We ranked 8th in nanoscience production, but we have to transform the science into products in order that people feel the progress of the technology in their lives. We have to undertake a project to change science into wealth. The best way to increase our position in nanotechnology in the world is to support knowledge-based companies and the young educated people in the country. Iran made 168 nano products and devices in 2012. To give Iranian researchers and experts a chance to showcase their latest achievements in nanotechnology, the Iran Nanotechnology Initiative Council holds an international nano expo in Tehran every year. This year, the festival was inaugurated by Iran's former Vice President for Science and Technology, Nasrin Sultan Kha, and the President's Chief of Staff, Mohammad Nahavandian. Holding exhibitions or festivals is one of the ways which help us to present our science and breakthroughs. Such exhibitions not only help direct and encourage our young researchers to present their ideas, but also are the indicators which show our position in the technology. Over 170 Iranian and foreign institutes and companies attended the expo that ran from October 5th to October 9th. Companies from Russia, Romania, Lebanon and South Korea presented their products. In the political arena or in diplomacy, we may have some limitations to communicate with other countries, but in technological or scientific societies, we should be able to use other countries' breakthroughs in nanotechnology as many countries in the world are able to use our science production. As you see, there are various companies from other countries participating in the exhibition. This brings about an opportunity for comparison and also information transfer. 
The exhibition is an opportunity for Iranian experts to find investors for their products. This year, a section of the expo venue was allocated to new products that needed funding to be commercialized. Among the 60 products registered and presented in the innovation section, 12 were chosen to be invested in. They're produced by over 200 knowledge-based companies involved in nanotechnology. We tell our industrial managers if they don't consider using nanotechnology in their existing industry for enhancing the quality of their products, they are going to lose their future market and they will lose their competitiveness. So in this regard, uh, we've been very active and right now I can tell you in 10 different industries, we have managed to use nanotechnology. Dr. Robert Hark, the managing director of Insight Inert Asia, based in Singapore, tells us what he thought of the expo. I'm very pleasantly surprised at the amount of interest and uh, particularly at this expo, um, I'm amazed that there are nearly 200 companies or, or institute organizations that are here uh, presenting their products or their research results. The clothing and textile industry is also changing thanks to nanotechnology. Tehrani Production Industrial Group is a textile company in Iran which uses nanotechnology to produce antibacterial clothing. This thread is anti-odor, antifungal and antibacterial. Our product could obtain license from the Food and Drug Organization at the Ministry of Health. The organization approved the product's safety, performance and nanometricality. So it is quite safe. For instance, a pair of antibacterial socks is different from an ordinary pair. Our nano socks are antimicrobial and the Department of Microbiology at the University of Tehran has approved that the product never lose its microbial feature after being washed even in 100 centigrade water. There are some startups in Iran which are active in the field of nanotechnology. They study ways to manufacture novel nano products on a large scale. Rang Tarak Tazini Asia is one of these companies. We presented an article in the Commercialization of Micro Nanosystems Conference, which is biggest nanotechnology conference in the world. After that, we focused on the pre-production and production phase. Fortunately, now we have been successful in the marketing, which makes us encouraged to work on new nanostructures. Currently, our nano paint can be used on different surfaces, whether polymer or non-polymer. Using nanomaterials in the paint and coating manufacturing industry benefits automakers as well. Auto nano paint is the new craze in car manufacturing in Iran as well as elsewhere in the world. One of our projects was developed to fulfill the need for nanostructures and coatings in other industry. We applied nanostructures in bumper paint. The application helps us have a permanent bumper paint which will not be scraped in accidents. We can also use these nanomaterials in outer coating of the car, especially in polyamide nanocomposites in other parts, whether in inner panels or in engine parts. Golri's company is one of the biggest producers of facial tissues and paper handkerchiefs in Iran. It uses nanoparticles to make its products antibacterial. Iran Today spoke to Mojtawa Hoshemian, the CEO of the company, at the exhibition. We have worked on our project for eight years. Twelve Iranian researchers in our R&D department have studied the plan to produce nanotissues using nanosilver. Golriz obtained the patent for this innovation and introduced itself as the first company in Iran and the world which produces such nanotissue. Utilizing high technology like nanotechnology in industry enhances efficiency and is cost effective. This was one of the reasons why Golri's company invested in nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is a high tech which can have various applications. When you achieve nanotechnology, you can manipulate metals, for example. This not only reduces the total cost of a product, but also increases the efficiency. This way you can make various products with more added values. 
تجلی یک فناوری در تولید A technology is fruitful when you can use it to generate wealth, when you have the products made by the technology on the market, or when it helps increase the quality of life in a country. Currently, you can see nanocloth and materials with special features on the market. For instance, water-resistant fabrics, which are used widely in clothes, or antibacterial fabrics, which are vastly used in hospitals, or nanopaints, which include insulative paints, anti-scratch paints, or high-quality paints. All of these products are being mass-produced in Iran. Nanotechnology creates new materials and devices which can be utilized in many different ways. In the oil and gas industry, the technology can help improve efficiency. Realizing this, Iran's oil ministry has recently approved the petroleum industry's strategic nanotechnology document. According to this document, 10% of the ministry's research budget must be allocated to high techs like biotechnology, nanotechnology and membrane technology. This means the whole industry must try and use nano products and devices, including nano structured materials, excavation drills that have nano diamond coatings, nano filters, carbon nano tubes, nano catalysts, nano insulations, and nano emulsion. The future of nanotechnology globally is an exciting one, primarily because it really has only just started. So um, if Iran is able to uh, develop some core competencies in some of these nanotechnologies, it doesn't have to be all of them, but some of them, and uh, particularly in the areas of energy, where Iran is already rich in oil and gas, if, you're, if Iran is able to uh, develop a nanotechnology competency that synergizes with the oil and natural gas industry, then I think that that's something that uh, Iran could sell to the rest of the world. Researchers at the Petroleum Industry Research Institute, which is affiliated with the National Iranian Oil Company, has made a nanotube that is used in oil pipelines. Ali Reza Khoshniyat was the project manager. The Research Institute of Petroleum Industry produces 100 kg of carbon nanotubes per day in two different kinds, single-walled and double-walled nanotubes. These nanotubes are utilized in various industries, especially in oil and gas industry. They are used as nanofluids in heat transfer, friction transfer and other areas with their different features. A wide range of nano products can also be used in the gas and petrochemical industry, especially nano catalysts. Currently, there are some nanocatalysts produced in the country which are used in gas sweetening. By means of these nanocatalysts, the process of sour gas sweetening is done with a higher quality. Nanocatalysts have also been effective in petrochemical industry. I think Iran has been so successful in this sector. The Research Institute of Petroleum Industry has issued many patents in this field. Nanotechnology is hugely applied in pharmacy, with nanodrugs revolutionizing the world of medicine. Nanomedicine mainly involves the medical application of nanomaterials in order to boost the effectiveness of drugs. On the first day of Iran Nano 2013, Iran unveiled three nanodrugs. Sina Amphorlish, that is used to cure topical fungal skin diseases, Sina Curcumin, which can be taken as an anti-tumor, antioxidant, anti-arthritis, and anti-inflammatory drug. And Sina Doxosome, which is an anti-cancer nanodrug. These nanomedicines are produced by Exir Nano Sina Company. Mohammad Reza Jafari, the CEO of the company, explains about Sina Doxosome, the mass production of which began in 2012. Dr. Robeson is an anti-cancer drug which has been used for cancer treatments for 40 years in the world. The medicine has serious side effects on patients, so doctors do not rely on it as a common cancer drug. In nanodoxosome, which we produced, we have 100 nanometer nanoliposomes, which contain all doxorobicins inside. 
When nanodoxosome is injected, the medicine will not be released in body until the medicine reaches the tumor and targets it. European companies have the monopoly over the production of this drug, which they call Salix, as did the United States. In the US, it's called Doxil. Importing this medicine cost Iran $5 million annually, but now Iranians can buy it for one-third of the price. Iranian scientists have also produced other nanodrugs which used to be imported. We succeeded in producing an anti-cancer drug which is similar to its foreign counterpart. We tested the drug and got the approval to mass produce it. Currently, the drug is being mass produced and is available on the market. According to the tests, our product is broadly comparable in quality to its foreign counterparts. Nanomedicines, like all new products, must be tested over and over again to make sure they have no adverse side effects. We decided to make a device to test the performance of a nanomedicine in the biological environment without the laboratory rat dyes. The device should check the performance of the medicine when it concentrates in a certain biological environment. Before a nanomedicine being mass produced, it should be injected into the rat's body. After the injection, the nanoparticle places in a certain tissue. Our device is equipped with laser which revolves around the body, so the device can check the concentration of the nanomedicine and its biological performance in the tissue in real time. State-of-the-art techniques in nanotechnology have already prompted the use of nanoproducts in the agriculture and food industries. The knowledge-based Seper Parmis company brings nanotechnology to agriculture. By using nanotechnology in agriculture, we can have better features of the particles. This way, our goals in agriculture will be reached. We produce nano-fertilizer in our company. These fertilizers help plants blossom more. They help crops preserve more in stores. Actually, the products benefits our agriculture. You need 30 to 40 grams of this fertilizer to boost the growth of a tree. This reduces the expenses. According to our estimation, using nanotechnology in agriculture increases the added value 15 to 20 times. The art of engineering and manipulating particles on such a scale could help take water treatment to a whole new level. This liquid is contaminated with dust particles. If we add a drop of this nanoparticle, the contamination will be isolated from the liquid in five seconds. You can have a physical purification here in five seconds. The nanoparticle increased the efficiency. We're using uh, nanotechnology for uh, drinking water purification and also wastewater management is another priority for our activity. And we know that we can use nanotechnology to have a better environment and uh, for uh, actually uh, uh, to have a better environment for reducing the pollution. Fibers measuring less than 100 nanometers across are called nanofibers and they are used in filtration systems. Fanovaran Nano Merias is one of Iran's leading companies which produces nanofibers. These nanofibers can contain some material depending on their functions. They will add a new feature to their fibers. For example, in purifying the wastewater, these nanofibers not only purify and filter wastewater, but also can have extra functions in order to increase their efficiency and performance. In recent years, Iran has been coping with severe sanctions imposed on it by the US and the EU. The embargoes have made it very difficult for Iranian researchers and companies to gain access to up-to-the-minute scientific information and equipment. Officials say the sanctions have made life difficult, but they've also presented Iran's nanotech society with challenges that have helped them grow. I can give you an example. For example, for uh, doing research uh, and development in the field of nanotechnology, we needed sophisticated lab instruments for nanotechnology improvements. So this embargo 
uh, I mean, we were not able to purchase these uh, sophisticated instruments. And uh, we had no other option rather than going to for design and construction of these instruments. So uh, on a way, uh, this embargo forced us to realize our abilities. And right now, we have about 40 sophisticated lab instruments in the field of nanotechnology, which is produced by almost 30 companies. And it's already in the market. And some of them have been successful to enter the international market. Iran's economy depends heavily on oil and gas revenues. Many observers believe that by utilizing high technologies, especially nanotechnology, can help change the country's economy from a resource-based one to a knowledge-based one. Iran has made a quantum leap in nanotechnology since the year 2000. And ironically, its experts and researchers have been more successful in recent years despite the crippling sanctions imposed by Western powers. Unexpectedly, the statistics show the country has already reached the goals outlined in its nanotechnology future strategy, defying the concept that science and sanctions don't mix.